Hey guys, welcome back to Here's the Thing Auto. Sean Sampson here as always. I uh, wanted to come to you and talk about something that I have planned to make a video on for the last few weeks that I wanted to give it a few weeks before I made this video. Um, I want to talk to you about the new version of Top Gear America. Now, anybody who knows me knows I'm a fan of the old version. I thought Tanner, Rutt, and Adam were a fantastic trio that, while not in the same vein of the originals quite, were definitely entertaining to watch and brought a different flavor to the Top Gear formula. Um, the new three, obviously, were, were only a few episodes in, so it's, it's not like I can give you a, a final thesis on their formula, their chemistry, anything like that. But I did want to talk a little bit about the shows, comparing the two. Um, the new show has potential. Um, I'm not sure that they're any better than the old ones. Um, a lot of people did not like the old show. I obviously, as we you know, just said, I, I was a fan of the old show. So in that regard, I don't think that we've improved anything with this with this new setup and the new uh, the new cast. So. One thing I do want to say, um, so far the new Top Gear has come out of the block stumbling in the exact same fashion that the old one did. I think a lot of the reason that they canceled the old Top Gear America was because it had developed its own identity and wasn't copying or wasn't thriving off of the original Top Gear in-studio home base formula. So. Of course, first thing they re-implemented on this new version was the studio segments that they had gotten rid of in the other version. Now, for the people that did watch the old Top Gear America, you know, for the first two seasons, it was a little rough. They did have the in-studio segments. They were exclusively trying to copy the original British version's formula. And that almost killed the show after the first two seasons. Uh, third season they came back they retooled it pretty much everything was out of studio and was on site and the show improved dramatically timing chemistry all the factors that people attribute the success of the original Top Gear 2 all of those factors started to come into play with these guys Adam, Rutt, Tanner, all of them really started to mesh. They had always meshed outside of the studio, but the, the timing became awkward and the mission of the show, if you will, became muddled by those in-studio segments. Um, and I think it's very much so the same thing with the new one. So we've got the in-studio segments. We've got uh, Bill... Fitchner leading those in-studio segments um, very much so trying to copy Jeremy's original interaction with the other two in the studio kind of the 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 leader <laughs> the the ringmaster uh, if you will of the circus so however that is giving the show an awkward timing I've been very impressed with I've been very impressed with uh, the out of studio segments for the most part, um, not quite to the level that the guys were in the old version, um, just because they do still seem very stiff. Now obviously over time they'll loosen up, they'll start to mesh together a little bit better, um, but right now things are still very stiff and it, it's almost like they're trying to impress each other. Um, Antron is still, you know, he's he's the racer, he's the top fuel dragster guy. Um, you know, he's still very much so, look what I can do. Oh, I'm a professional race car driver. That's that's his thing, by all means. That is your thing, go with it and try to show it off. Um, Tom Ford is the snarky Brit. I'm not sure Top Gear America, Top Gear America needs a snarky Brit. I think they brought him on for added authenticity for fans of the original Top Gear and for fans of the Grand Tour. Um, I, I, I am of the, 
I'm of the opinion that we don't need a snarky Brit on Top Gear America. Um, it's not that he's a bad presenter. He's an auto journalist, but we don't need constant jabs at America and I'm better than you because I'm British and uncultured swine and this, that, and the other. Um, you know, that gets old after a while. And for a, car, for a show that's supposed to be about the car culture of America, I'm not sure that we need that kind of input and interaction on the show. I think it's, I think it may end up poisoning the show. Um, in all honesty, if anybody got swapped out, I think it should be Tom Ford. Um, Bill Fitchner, um, fantastic actor. A lot of people know him from Prison Break, Black Hawk Down, Armageddon, um, and a part that he played in The Dark Knight that a lot of people seem to mention and was like a minor part. Anyway, um, he's a great presenter. Uh, he is, he's, like, like I said, it goes back to the Jeremy analogy. He is the ringleader. Uh, the difference was, is that Jeremy really, uh, you know, he had no problem making a fool out of himself. On, and Bill, he takes himself, I don't want to say too seriously, but he takes himself pretty seriously. Um, at the end of the day, even when they're in the field doing their challenges, supposed to be having fun, what I'm not seeing so far is them having fun. It seems to be a lot of torturous interaction that we're supposed to laugh at because it's another human being's misfortune. Um, there was a little bit of that in the original Top Gear. There was a little bit of that in the original Top Gear America. But ultimately, it was the camaraderie and the team building and the fact that when the guys are in the uh, field, there are three friends hanging out and doing stupid stuff that they probably shouldn't be doing. That so far has not at all come across on this show. Um, that was one of the things that I feel the last Top Gear America got right, right off the bat. Um, from the very first episode, as soon as they dropped them in the field and came out of the studio, um, it was it was almost immediately immediate chemistry. Maybe not as the way that BBC wants it done, where they're presenting cars and um, you know obviously the very British idea of stiff upper lip and the way BBC can tell you that the world is exploding and burning down around you and you feel okay because they present it in a professional and straightforward manner. Um, Top Gear America, the original, did not do that. They never did that, and that was the genius of it. Uh, they were three friends out having fun, um, destroying cars, particularly Adam. Uh, by the way, Adam Ferrara is the man. Um, he was probably my favorite part of the original show. Everybody else hates him because he wasn't enough of an enthusiast. Um, let me say, you know, uh, there's different kinds of enthusiasts. Uh, is he somebody that I would you know, used to epitomize car guys? No. But he represented the everyman who wasn't, you know, NASCAR presenter every Sunday at the racetrack or invited to the Toyota, you know, celebrity racing events like Rutledge. And he wasn't the, you know, um, first person that you call when you need a stuntman or GRC world champion or, you know, WRC uh, world contender, Tanner Faust. He was the everyman, you know, in every novel, every movie, every show, it's one of the oldest tropes in the world, but it still rings true because it's necessary. You need somebody in the world that you've created that represents the reader, the average man. Um, we don't, you know, when we read Superman, we like Jimmy Olsen. You know, we, we root for, you know, anytime Jimmy Olsen is involved in a Superman story, uh, you know, that's that's us. That is us. We are the normal guy watching these gods fight in the sky. Um, you know, Top Gear's not that serious, but that is essentially what Adam was. And the fact that he took it serious enough, a lot of people don't think about this. There's a couple episodes where they mentioned it. Um, Adam took the opportunity serious enough to where he took driving classes, stunt driving classes, um, 
you know, emergency, uh, emergency maneuvers, um, a lot of different classes and things that he brushed up on because he took the job seriously. That to me is, is worth quite a bit. Somebody that cares. Um, and I think the fact that he cared about the show showed as much as any of the other presenters who did exactly what they were doing on Top Gear, just in every other aspect of their lives. So I think that's that's something that needs to be said. Um, long story short, I'm not bailing on the show yet. Like I said, it's not a bad show, but if they don't remove the in-studio portions, it's going to get a bad name the same way Top Gear America did. Uh, even even regular Top Gear is not what Top Gear used to be. And, you know, anybody who's not lived under a rock for the last three years, even if you don't watch Top Gear, you know that the original three um, are no longer on Top Gear and are now on the Grand Tour after Jamie um, hurt somebody's feelings in somebody's face. But, um, yeah, so I, um, I give the show a B- minus for now. Um, it could get better. I mean, I don't, I don't expect, I never expect the show to be fantastic right out of the gate, especially if you have, oh, police choppers, um, especially if you have, um, you know, it's not scripted actors, even if it is scripted actors, you know, uh, it's, it's great to have somebody who's a professional who can jump right into a character and interact with others, um, the way that, you know the characters should believably be able to act being that they know each other or they get in a wacky situation and it's all real life supposedly but um you know we know top gear is a show with a script as much as they want to act like it's not it is and i, I give it a b minus for now um i'm hoping that they can reach the level that the last generation of top gear america presenters did where it is natural where it is flow i hope they can find that friendship that they don't seem to have right now um, you know, I'm, I'm a person that gave Top Gear America the first generation um, a solid B when it first came out. And after they got rid of the studio portions, it definitely became um, an A minus show, maybe even an A show. Um, but we'll see. Everything has opportunity. Once again, Sean Sampson for Here's the Thing Auto, signing off.